<laughs> As we begin the observation of 16 days of activism against the gender-based violence, I on Dependency features once again the internationally acclaimed, award-winning film, Trafficked. This time, we're testing your knowledge of the act, the means, and the purpose of human trafficking. Joining us will be the Deputy Director of the Counter-Trafficking Unit, Kimoy Thomas, who will also share updates on the initiatives of the CTU and the Ministry of National Security to combat this deadly crime of modern-day slavery. Listen live from 10 a.m. on I-95.5 FM or watch live on the I on Dependency Facebook page or YouTube channel. I on Dependency. We don't just share stories. We change lives. I on Dependency with Garth and Natasha. Reality Radio, at its best, where every life is a biography. Sundays at 10 a.m. and exclusively on I-95.5 FM. And streamed live on the I on Dependency Facebook page and YouTube channel. Welcome to Independency, right here on I-95.5 FM, live on the Independency Facebook page and YouTube channel. That's E-Y-E-O-N, Dependency. Good morning, Natasha. Good morning, Gus. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. And we thank you so much once again, you our loyal supporters and listeners and viewers, for joining us on at the start. As you know, every year we observe the um the against 16 days 16 of days of activism against gender-based violence against. it actually starts on the 25th of november so we are starting a little early in terms of the discussion about um all forms of violence against women and girls and to do that we are again featuring the award-winning traffic this time to test your knowledge on <coughs> the act, the means, the purpose of human trafficking. There was a poll done on TV6 some months ago where the question was asked if human trafficking or are you able to recognize if human trafficking is happening right under your nose? And surprisingly, uh, a large percentage of you said no. And although the CTU and the relevant arms of the protective service have been on the ground for a very long time since 20 let's say 20, since 2013 and for some reason again maybe it's our style that once it don't, doesn't affect us it doesn't bother us but it's happening right under your nose and for instance some of the men some of the men who go out there purchasing commercial sex, you are supporting human trafficking. Yes, you are. Because that long young lady that you would buy or pay for for an hour or two, when you're done with her, she has to go get cleaned up and wait for someone else. And then, not to mention the amount of drugs that, that circulate in that industry, the amount of drugs that they use, and drugs and including alcohol and the money that they make if they, let's say for the night they make five hundred dollars they get one out of that depends if any, at all. if any at all it depends on who and if they have to pay back a debt then they're working for free so they sleep with 50 men a night for free and we have that going on in our midst right now and then there's the holiday time coming up we end we started already and people want to make extra cash so there are those who would be coerced into taking drugs from trinidad and tobago to another country with that notion that they're going to come back here with 50 grand to spend for christmas and some of you will not make it back or will get caught here or 
at the border where you plan to take that drugs over and as a trafficking in person act speaks to that as well tricking coercing, and forcing someone to transport drugs across borders so you see the the, the problem we have and i know that people are trying to make some money i know times are hard but we're going to present this movie to you this morning so that you will see how three Trinidadians were caught up, those of you who haven't seen traffickers yet, were caught up in a drug trafficking ring and the end results, I wouldn't give it away. And then after that, we will speak with the Deputy Director of the Corner Trafficking Unit, Ms. Kimoy Thomas-Williams. Tasha? Yes, and, and although we have used traffic, trafficked to explore some of the, the issues surrounding drug trafficking, be mindful as well that um, as God alluded to earlier, if you are coerced or tricked or forced to transport drugs across borders, you yourself are also being trafficked. So we show this film again this morning to alert you to the, the connection between the trafficking of drugs and the trafficking of persons. Yes, it's and again, if, if you're lucky... Hand in hand. Yes, and if you're lucky to, you make it back home because sometimes when you reach to that destination, if you manage to, then that person could traffic you onto someone else. Correct. Or you can just disappear and they take your organs. And and persons, as as is said in the, in the in the world of the anti-trafficking um, world. That a person can be trafficked multiple times. Drugs can only be trafficked once. That's but right. People can be sold over and over and over again. That's why it's a big business. Yep. That's why it's a lucrative business. And when Miss Thomas Williams comes on, she will take you through the steps of the act, the means, the purpose. Of course, you'll hear what her unit, um, the counter trafficking unit, and the Ministry of National Security by extension, you know, continue to do to, to keep us safe, keep you safe and have you educated on the issues of human trafficking. This film trafficked was cited by the U.S. State Department in the 2017 TIPS report as one of the tools used by the counter trafficking unit to not only educate, but it helped elevate Trinidad and Tobago to tier two on the trafficking in persons watch this. You can check it yourself, 2017 tips report. You will see the, they actually named the movie, this movie we are about to show you. Produced locally, it's a true story about three of our nationals who went to have a good time and what happened in the end. It's a good lesson for you young people right now and for your parents to speak with young people because you know what? These young people were attending university. So you think they should have you know, a little more common sense, but unfortunately they didn't. So without further ado, let's go to a break. Remember, this is your teaching moment here again. And we hope that you grasp this lesson that we're trying to show you uh, or present to you here this morning. There are a number of things I said in the movie that you will see that you could record and we could probably ask you a question or two after that. So let's go to this quick break. And when we return... We bring you part one of the movie Trafficked. Some of us like to play games of chance. But remember, gaming should be fun. So don't get carried away. Play for a prize, but don't pay the price. Play for fun, but never for keeps. Play smart, but never play all. Winning isn't everything. If you or someone you know needs help, Call our gambling addiction hotlines, Rebirth House, 24-hour hotline, 466-3146, or Serenity Place Empowerment Center for Women, 794-7980, an initiative of NLCB and I on Dependency. At Guardian Group, we've seen so many of our customers achieve great things. From key moments, when together we've planned for the future, to those unforgettable days, when you've celebrated the rewards of those great decisions. So, 
It's no surprise that after 175 years, our optimism is stronger than ever. Because when you've partnered with people to achieve their best lives as long as we have, you tend to see the world a little brighter every day. Guardian Group. Live easy. The government of Trinidad and Tobago, through the National Task Force Against Trafficking in Persons, continues to develop and implement effective policies and procedures to prevent and suppress human trafficking. To date, the National Task Force has developed two national plans of action against the crime of trafficking in persons. Trinidad and Tobago adopts a four-pronged approach in its response to human trafficking. One, effective identification of victims and witnesses. Two, prevention of human trafficking. Three, protection of victims and witnesses. And four, prosecution of suspected traffickers. In the Ministry of National Security, we establish a specialized unit called the Counter Trafficking Unit to lead and manage Trinidad and Tobago's response to human trafficking. The Counter Trafficking Unit works closely with the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, the Immigration Division, and international law enforcement agencies to aggressively and proactively investigate and prosecute suspected human traffickers. Human trafficking is a serious crime. Rest assured, the government of Trinidad and Tobago and its agencies remain committed in the fight against human trafficking and will respond with immediate effect when the need arises. We are the Counter Trafficking Unit of the Ministry of National Security, Trinidad and Tobago, safeguarding human life. Eye on Dependency with Garth and Natasha. Reality Radio, at its best, where every life is a biography. Sundays at 10 a.m. and exclusively on i95.5 FM. And streamed live on the Eye on Dependency Facebook page and YouTube channel. All right, so I hope you're ready to go. You have your um, children near you. You have someone that needs to see this film trafficked and if you've so if you've seen it already it wouldn't hurt to give it a second look you might see or learn something new yeah that always happens you watch a movie for the second or third time and yes. you you see things that you would have missed so again this is preventative here mm -hmm. um those of you who can't make it on facebook please join us on youtube and you look for e-y-e-o-n dependency episode 46 and you'll be inside Alright, and remember while you're there to please like and subscribe to our page and our channel and click on that button so that you'll get notifications every time we go live. Right? So without further ado folks folks, let's go. All local actors are critically acclaimed internationally, both here at film festival and film festivals abroad, and we present you this morning this morning traffic. Enjoy. And learn.
You can believe it. Somebody else died in this place last night. On top of that, it was a mother of dread. Nads, we promised when we came we'd have a good time. Do not worry. It's not going to happen. What do you... Nobody felt the need to lock the door? <sighs> Lord Jesus Christ. Morning, sweetie. <sighs> of course, y'all are not ready. What did you bother with all you? You mean tell me I have time watch Kabi Kushi Kabi Kam and Kach Kach Hotahi with Spanish subtitles? And all is still not ready yet? One to you. As reading this. Guild is thing is happening to locals with tourists. Huh. Let's hope so. And breakfast wasn't five minutes ago. Which one of your four <laughs> stomachs not full your guild? <laughs> the fifth one. And Penny, get your face out of the mirror now. Your face like a damn canvas. Hush your ass now. I don't understand okay. why you're getting on so. We always had to be waiting on Miss Penny. Anyway. <coughs> he hello? Hi, yes. Mm-hmm. We did, we did. Okay, yes. All right, five, um... Cinco, cinco minutos. Thank you. The tour guide is here, so we need to leave, you know, sometime soon. Five minutes. Look. Not ten. Oh God, I don't take that long. Don't rush me, a man. I was acting like I'm taking forever. I am ready. I'm standing up. You are arguing, and he's clearly lying. Man. I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on. Da -de -da -da -de -da -da. Let's go. You lock that door? Yes, shops are locked the door. Oh gosh. Nadia, every single time we come in and out to the room, it's the same thing with you, eh? I didn't just re tell you about that article in the room. Yes, you did, but the constant state of paranoia is not going to help anything. We're going right there to there. Oh gosh. Take it down. Nothing is going to happen. And use the same one who picked this jacked up hellhole either way. Exactly. Week. That's what I could afford. God. <laughs> Cheap. Now, but real hot today, though. Yeah, it is. That's good, though. You bring sunscreen? Yeah, it's in my bag. Cause that looks sexy for the girls, I'm sure. Hola. Hola. <laughs> Somebody like you. <laughs> Somebody with a good word. I'm used to this gossip that I get over yourself. Sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stop shooting. Now, boy, you're <laughs> and that is what Jesus do you. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> now, only second your vacation. Today is going to be epic. Oh, yeah, Nadia, I hope it's so. been oh, so great already. I'm Nadia. After you shut down the place and have the entire hotel smelling like a labas, what do you really expect? <laughs> Why you always have to be so loud, girl? <laughs> shit, man. Um, I, could... I mean, I don't think next door heard you. I could be louder, you know. You mean after my game with that gas or down the people then buffet? <laughs> All day. You know what? All day. <laughs> we're going to tour something now. I don't. I can't. I oh just gosh. cannot. So what's up? Calm down Chops. now. Calm it down now. Sorry, oh God. Hmm. Alright, alright, alright. What's really pop with you two for, boy? Because you love us. Hmm. Uh, I question that. Let's go. Hmm. And besides, you don't want to miss the chance of going on the boat later. There's a boat? Talk, I must have a boat. And we need you to balance it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, you're seriously, though. I really hope I have a good man out here for me, you know. Oh, God, here we go again. No, because I'll be a waste of a perfectly good trip. And you all know this. Just say. You want to get M-A-N or you want to get S-T-D? I want a salsa picante. An exotic experience. An exotic itch. Oh, gosh, don't be on me now. Heady scene, the lobby is actually that way. So, can we go that way? Come on, salsa picante. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Mi amor, hey. You're pretty, Lupita Bonita. Gracias. Where are you from? From the island. Mm, which part of the island? Um, hola. <laughs> We're supposed to meet the tour guide here this morning. In which room are you in? Two, two, one, two, one. Two, one. Oh, 201. Oh, that's Juan Carlos. Juan Carlos, te buscan. 
Thank you so much. You're welcome. You didn't call my name like that. Come on. Hi, this is the key. Um, this guy. Yes. He's registered, right? Yes, he is. Yeah? Yes. Safe? You're safe. Thank you. You're welcome. Hola, mi nombre es Juan Carlos de Excursión a la Isla. ¿Hablan español? No. I'm Juan Carlos, the tour guide. Penny. I'm George. Juan Carlos. Nadia. Juan Carlos. She's responsible for making us late. I have to apologize. She kept us waiting and we were fighting to lift off the bed. That's no problem. <laughs> okay. Okay, guys, we're going to be experiencing different things. We're going to have a fantastic day, as you can see here in this peak. Okay. What do that dolphin thing do? Of course, we can do it. Sure, I no problem. We can do it. Do. Nadia, you have a woogie? No. Um, Paco, you could take a picture of us. Yeah, of course, Paco. I can. Paco. Some sponge money. Right. Smile. Come, chubs. Smile. Say la fortuna. La fortuna. Right. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Yeah, I ride your shotgun, eh? <laughs> To those of you sensitive as you may hear the S word and the A word slip out ever so often, but as we promise you reality radio, and those of you listening on radio, you can follow the dialogue, it's clear enough. So our three Trinidadians are about to embark on this adventure that will, of course, turn wrong in a while. Um, again, you can join us on our Dependency Facebook page or YouTube channel, EYE on Dependency. Had a good time? Oh my god, yes. Yeah, man, pretty cool so far. Um, Two thumbs up. I guess, I mean, but I'm really ready to go back to the hotel. Please, please. There is one more place you need to see. It's not touristy. Yeah, yeah. Hold yes. on, hold on. Look, guys, I came out today. I did have a little fun, but I'm ready to go back to the hotel, you know? I want to take a shower. Come on, please, Ritzel. She's trying to say she want to wash the punks. <laughs> it's a beach. What does Mandra's call me? Awkward. Oh God, no girl. He said a beach, you know, oh. water, sand, oh, combined. Oh, right. oh. Es muy bonita, es muy segura, es paraíso. It's beautiful, it's safe, it's paradise. Nadia, I want to go to paradiso and paradise and all the beautiful places. Ooh, um, oh, hold on, go easy. Look, this is not the itinerary, so how much is beautiful paradise gonna cost us, you know? Nothing. I see. Um, what say you, Mother Goose? Uh, um, I guess then we're going to the beach. Right. We vamos. We vamos. We vamos rápido. We vamos rápido. It's looking like Trinidad, though. Yeah, so why do we have to be here? Wow. Follow me. Follow him? Trust me, it will be worth it. Okay, you have to climb down the escaleras to get to Playa Bonita. You want us to do what? Yeah, hear it, man. You see how to climb. They're looking so hard. 
Cuidado, cuidado. Take care. Camina despacio. No hay problema. Que me arrolí por igual, ¿no? Eh. 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 Welcome to Playa Bonita. This is one of the most beautiful and wonderful beaches in the entire island. People come here during the weekends, also on Fridays, to take a sleep, to relax themselves. Also, you can appreciate that spectacular view we have in front of us. Turtles come here to lay their eggs, and you can see them at night if you want. My God, it's so beautiful. You're rich. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the day so far. Yeah, man. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much. No problem. Much. I have to go back to the vehicle. Excuse me. Okay. Bye. Hola. Jefe. Okay. Jesso? You all find it weird how this man just answers phone? Yes, Nadia. Real weird. He answered his phone. Ooh. What the hell is wrong with you two? What if he leaves us here? What if that man stranded us here? So? Oh, so you want to stay here for the rest of your life? What part of the man saying it's safe? You not understanding? The man say it's safe, so chill! You two just don't like to worry about anything. Everything is happy. You know, when you go into early menopause and screw up this whole trip for us, I really cuss on your bad, you know? Nadia, Nadia, oh God. Stop it, na man. Stop it! The constant nagging, arguing, or oh gosh, the negativity cut it out. You're not gonna spoil this for me. You're not gonna spoil it for us. Cut it out. Go ahead. You're out of control. You're paranoid. Cut it out. Gosh, go have your fun. George, I'm going into the water. You coming? Yeah, let me go now. Are you having a good time? Well, they sure are. I'll come back in two hours, right? Sure, okay. Okay. See you later. Bye. Penny. Mmm. Oh, George. Yes. I bet I know what you two up to. What's that you have there? Is weed you have there? You trying to get us locked up or what? Oh good, Nadia. Nobody's here. Who's here to get us locked up? Nobody. God, oh, George. Pass it now. You wake me up for what? Pass, pass. Oh, here it is. You bring this with you. You feel like stupid. The girl from the restaurant now. <laughs> she got my blood. Last night. Which one? Maria. Maria? The real best jello ass. After I see she in them jeans, I say, God! Shut up. Dan come back as our jeans and a dog. Just shut up. Come, put this in your mouth. Oh, God, no. I don't need drugs to have a good time. George, hurry up and put that out. There's a man coming. George, George, don't out it. Don't out. Hola, chicos. Hola. Turistas. No, we local. No, we local. 
Um, um, turistas, turisters. Hablan español? No. Inglés? Sí. Seems like you are having a wonderful time. Peru. You should be careful. La policía like to put turistas in jail for smoking yerba. Yerba? Ganja. Oh my God, George. We could have been in jail. Oh God, easy now, Nadia. Nadia, I ain't gonna lie, girl. You could real kill a man high, you know. God, exactly. You had to always be quintin yourself, so. <laughs> Quinton. Next time, just take a pull now. Your accent. Nadia, where are you from? Asparate. Let me guess. Kujana. Kujana? Kujana. You man tried to say Guyana, Nadia. We look Guyanese? We're from Trinidad. Ah, Trinidad. Yes. Many beautiful women come from Trinidad. The accent? Mm. Music to my ears. Uh, I don't know about that one, eh? Because when these two talking, all I hear is one set of noise. Hush now. Hey, welcome to my country. You picked a good bitch, Chico. Air is safe. She need no worry. Isus nombres. My name is Alejandro. I'm George. And these okay. are my friends, Penny hey. and... Um, Penny. What's your name again? Nadia George. Nadia. Nadia George, that's right. Nadia George. <laughs> Nadia George. <laughs> she are funny, you three. Would you mind terribly if I join you? Of course. Of course. <laughs> so how do you know each other? She related? No. <laughs> oh God, no. <laughs> to them? Nah. We met on the first day of school. Okay. And since then they kind of like just follow me around school everywhere I went. Uh, like whatever. Straight, yeah. No, 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 love. No. I was the popular one in the bunch. They followed suit and we've been inseparable ever since. Ah, see, nice. Yuli was so friendless, eh? Friendless, bad, bad, bad. Which had knocked me walking up and down campus all day. Nobody had no time studying you. Ah, see. You enjoying? Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful, I give you that, but... See, it's beautiful. It's really quiet and there's not much to do. But Nadia chose it, so we don't have a choice. Claro. Well, I was looking for somewhere where, you know, I could be relaxed, you know, nice and quiet. Yeah. He's quiet. But, as I said, there's nothing much to do. The oh. clubs are closed, so there's nothing to do a day Don't or night. Mean, so. quiet. Well, this is low season. But you're lucky. You see the trains to those lost days. It seems someone has brought the sunshine. It's the dry season, though. It always has sun. <laughs> Good one. My friend, Parati. Como se dice in English? Best ever. It's a super bueno. You know what? Wait. I don't mean to be rude, eh? But I've read enough books and, you know, watch enough movies to know that people don't just find you on a random deserted beach and want to be your best friend. I mean, mira, mira. you came prepared with a joint and all. Qué pena. Nadia, Tough take cookie. your voice down. Tough <laughs> now, cookie, please, yeah. Please, just be pleasant now. Not everybody's a monster. Oh gosh, people are nicer here. Why are you so stupid? It's not about being stupid. Just take your voice down now. Can't be serious. Um, I have to apologize to Nadia. Sorry. No, no, no. She is going through a lot. Like, you really have to excuse her. She can't even help herself. Her family's lost all their money. And ah. Oh my God, are you crazy? She has issues and... <laughs> yeah, she doesn't even know what she's saying. Poor thing. <laughs> it happens. Nadia, where are you You know going? what? I got... Just sit down now. You're being so melodramatic. Calm down. Do you realize you just mashed up our friendship for a pretty face? Nadia, whatever. What? You know what? Goodbye. Just sit down. Where you? <laughs> cherry, whatever, Nadia. Cherry, cherry, cherry. You know, <laughs> I'm sorry if I've caused Wait. any trouble. Love, you didn't cause any trouble, you know. See that there? That is Nadia all day, every day. She's a hot, sticky mess, and there's no talking to her, there's no getting to her. Just leave it. Just leave it. We I'm didn't sorry. Know. I just come here every afternoon to relax. My house is just around the corner. If you need a local guide to show you around, I'll be more than happy to do so. Please, take my number.
Alejandro. Alejandro. I look forward to hearing from you. I will. Thank you. And maybe you should talk to your friend. But those rocks are treacherous. And please, give her my sincerest apologies. This man. That's all you to study? I think you should really go and talk to Nadia. For what? What do you mean for what? You know, went on Winston Duke ran on the girl in front of Ricky Martin there just now. Seriously, go and talk. Watch. She halfway down the beach already. She on a boat now, she going nowhere fast. She had to be vexed. Go and talk to the girl now. And here with Spanish now say the rocks, the treacherous, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> All right, sir. Go on, talk to her. And cover your ass now. That's... Just go away now. I don't want to talk to you right now. I didn't mean anything I said, you know. You know that. Like, I talk a lot. But I am sorry, though. I really am sorry, Nat. Estas son las chicas que el jefe quiere, ¿ok? Tú te encargas de la flaquita y yo de la gordita. Vamos a darle. Hola, aquí es la fiesta, ¿verdad? Hola, ¿cómo estamos? ¿Qué me cuentan? ¿Qué hacen por aquí tan solitas por acá? ¿Qué no fuma? No, no hablo inglés. ¿No hablas en inglés? ¿Y qué importa si hablas inglés o español? Esta es la fiestica. Look, we don't, we just wanna leave. Ey, 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 tú quédate quieta. Ahorita que la fiesta se va a poner buena, chica. Look. ¿Qué te pasa, vale? ¿Tienes miedo? No quiero tener problemas. Vale, trouble. aquí ya está hablando de problemas, chica. Aquí no hay problema. All right, folks, thank you for staying with us, and let's let's move quickly. That was part one. If you're just joining us, you're listening to Independency, you're listening on the radio. I know some of you long ago listened to Super Pro on the radio, so this is yes. no different. <laughs> exactly. um, let's go to that quick break, and as we continue, remember, we'll be joined by Deputy Director of Ms. the Corner Trafficking Unit, Ms. Uh, K- Kimoy Thomas-Williams, right after the movie to, to explain to you the act that means the purpose of human trafficking. And what have you seen so far, those of you who've been watching? What have you seen so far? What signs peer pressure red flags K- take um, note all right and um, post them in the chat if you if you like and yes we will address them at the end and remember you can videos. join us on youtube and eye on dependency or on facebook of this evening let's go to that break we'll be back hmm. we it is sex trafficking things are serious thing in a way sex trafficking mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I thought it was an human trafficking it of. But what do you mean? No most serious thing, boy. Where you get that from? I don't know about human trafficking, not about sex trafficking. So how can you spot and identify perpetrators and children who are victims of trafficking? Many victims who are children do not look like under 18 years old. Child victims often move escorted around alone or in small groups. 
They also live in shade and even packed rooms and have very little clothing and belongings. Child victims are often seen with adults who are not their parents, their relatives or their caregivers. Migrant children are often unaccompanied and separated from their parents. Child victims are often engaged in work that is not suitable for children. They are often deprived of their freedom to go to school, to play and to enjoy being a child. Perpetrators have unexplained sources of income and possessions. They are businessmen and businesswomen running legitimate and illegitimate businesses. Perpetrators may appear to be the victim's friend, boyfriend, close relative, or employer. We are the counter-trafficking unit of the Ministry of National Security, Trinidad and Tobago, safeguarding human life. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. At Guardian Group, we've seen so many of our customers achieve great things. So, it's no surprise that after 175 years, our optimism is stronger than ever. Because when you've partnered with people to achieve their best lives as long as we have, you tend to see the world a little brighter every day. Guardian Group. Live easy. Eye on Dependency with Garth and Natasha. Reality Radio, at its best, where every life is a biography. Sundays at 10 a.m. and exclusively on i95.5 FM. And streamed live on the Eye on Dependency Facebook page and YouTube channel. All right, folks, let's go. Part two, and we say welcome to the Concerned Parents uh, Association. <coughs> Concerned Parents Movement. Thank you very much for joining us. And, folks, you can join us if you wish, or you listen on your radio. Let's go to part two of Traffic. Pennywise, not long waiting for you to wake up. How are you feeling? Okay, I guess. I'll bring your ass downstairs now. Do you like the view? Yes, I do. So do I. Venga.
Penny. Israel, worried about you, but Ali and Jorel and the fellas on the beach as far as the doctor and thing now. So you do some kind of grease on that to me shit, you know. Pull out the paddle, shot to 200, clear. <laughs> How's Israel fucking best do, eh? Yes, it is. So what are we drinking? Um, water, for now? Bueno, bueno. We started something light. You good? Yeah, where's Nadia? Nad Nadia! Nadia! Nadia, you're drunk. No, I'm sober. No, you're drunk. Look, Nads. What? We need to talk. Oh, God. About earlier. Oh, listen to me. Listen, Nads. Not now. Listen. I'm sorry about everything. Ooh, Nadia. Ooh, yeah. How are you feeling? Better now. Penny, I hear you roll up like one dalpri on that beach today, Gil. Split peas everywhere. Look, George! Look, be quiet. You ain't even there to help me. Must be still our split peas all over our beach. I feel so embarrassed. Look, Alejandro, I really have to thank you for helping me. I mean us. No. It, it was the least I can do. Those men, what they did to you, shame our country. <laughs> but please, allow me to show you the beautiful side of our island. Can I come here? Yeah. Hey, we go to have it. I am ready to you know. Does it fun when you drink or? Shut up. Stop making fun of me. <laughs> You're so silly. Oh my god. Yes. Alejandro, I just want to thank you for today. Oh, it was wonderful. It was so best. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. man, it's real cool. Thank you so much for every single, everything, everything, everything. Thank you. I don't even know where you're staying. Um, I have to tell the taxi. Um, La, some, what's the name? Pool. Fortune? La Fortune? Something. Fortune. Something. La Fortuna. Yes. La Fortuna? Yeah. yeah. La Plaza del Mar? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, friends don't let friends stay there. Um, well, it's what I could afford, so... Well, then stay with me. What? Si, you I'm on vacation. Si. Um, don't make these jokes, really? Nadia, come Okay, now. but you only... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We've already paid for the hotel, so I don't think that's possible. Nadia. Nadia, this is the moment where Mira. you stop being yourself. Let fate happen, please. Mira, mi prima runs la fortuna. And she owes me a favor. I'll have a refund your room. Yes. Yeah. 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 And here's yeah. AC. Okay. Are you happy okay. <laughs> Bueno. Bueno. I'll tell the taxi. La Fortuna. We'll have a good time, I promise you. Bye. Adios. Adios. Thanks, man. Hasta mañana. Alejandro, <laughs> rompiste su nariz. Tiene que ver. Te pago extra. ¿Sabes? Esa morena está muy rica. Now, they fell for Alejandro's charms, and guess what happens next? Join us on 
thank you for joining us. You're listening to Andy Pennancy, and you can find us on Facebook page or YouTube channel, EYE on Dependency. Let's go back to traffic. Yes. Three I Tobago, my friends. Bienvenidos. Leave your luggage. Raul will see about you. Salud. Here's to faith, bringing us together. Salud. Salud. Cheers. I don't ever want to leave this place. You guys, I feel like we had to acknowledge my boy Alejandro, especially after these last few days. Yes. So, yes. Yes. Tali Andrew. 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 What you just said. Some shit about two weeks on how much fun it was. Um, anyway, I prepared a speech. Mm. <coughs> del parte del grupo, that's us, hey. <laughs> agar, agar, that's here. Mm. In English. <laughs> Woo! Please, Thank please, God. Please. We would have been here all week. <laughs> Anyway, all I was trying to say, Alejandro, is that the past two weeks have just been awesome. And I just want to thank you for everything. You know, I mean, you gave us all of this and asked for nothing in return. I'm going to stop you there. Oh? I do have a favor to ask. For you, Alejandro, anything. I do have a package to drop off in Trinidad. Nothing too big, of course. But another. Yeah, we could do that, Nads. Yeah, of course. Of course. And he's so so stupid! <laughs> you find that funny? All this time. All this time. You just wanted to use us as drug mules? Nadia, nah, easy buddy now. Nah. It's a joke. Has to be. Right, Alejandro? How do you think I can afford this beautiful house? All these beautiful things. Do you think I'm a banker? Love. Turn down! Se quiero mi casa por dos semanas, estoy comida. I save you from getting killed. I save you from getting raped. And you? This is how you thank me. This is how you thank Alejandro. Nadia. Do you think I will ever put my friend's life in danger? Alejandro, we would never traffic drugs. What if something were to happen to us? What if we were to get caught? Mira, I've been doing this a really long time. <laughs> Jorge, you're going to call someone. You're going to call your mommy. Do you really think someone will come here just to save you? Let me tell you something, my friend. 
even a police here, no not to fuck with me. Very good. Raimunda. to be dressed up. Alejandro, what the f is going on here? Why are you doing this? What? What about when we... What if we say no? I want to say no. I'm saying no, please. And thank you for dinner, but I'm really not that hungry any. George. I want to go home. I George. wanna go home. I wanna go George. home. George! 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 Stop it! Leave him alone! I believe you're all very well acquainted with Raul. Accept your fate. Follow the rules. You make a lot of money. No one gets hurt. Just don't do anything stupid and you'll be okay. Ken? Jorge? Yo sé que le gusta. I remember you liked it. Thank you. What you're going to do is swallow. 150 pellets each. I won't do that. You will. <laughs> you can practice. Use these grapes. <laughs> if you, you can, can swallow grape, you know. You can swallow a pellet of cocaine. Just don't bite it, or should I? You use us. You use me? Special. You should have listened to your friend Aya. I know you're all upset. But this is how I make my living. 
You should have some food. You should have a long day tomorrow. I don't want anything from you. Raul, no tiene hambre. Come on. Right, folks, so the trap has been set. Now they are caught. Now they are going to swallow the pellets of cocaine. And this is what it's all about. The act, the means, and the purpose of human trafficking. That Ms. Thomas Williams will explain further when she comes on. So, but um, those of you just joining us, we thank you very much. Um, those of you on YouTube especially, please remember to like. Just click the like button, all 100 plus of you. Please, you know, anyone of you, just click the, the, the button and ring that bell, subscribe to the channel and you'll be inside with it. Because we're continuing this next week too again and week after next where we'll have Miss uh, Kimoy Thomas Williams with other guests and we have some, some pe people who were actually tra we smuggled to Trinidad and Tobago for the purpose of trafficking. We're going to have them on too and um, just to keep this awareness going on and keep you aware of what's happening right under your nose right under your nose so our nationals now have got caught in the trap so they're now going to swallow the pellets to to um to transport and then they're going to, to board a, yes board a plane back to trinidad so the the third and final installation coming up right now traffic okay let's go short man one time We were so stupid. I'm so stupid. down in Trinidad where the other party were going to take over from there where they're going to take them to extract the pellets from them and of course this is one of the more nerve-wracking um, parts of the journey for them of course because they are they are now they have ingested the pellets as instructed so you know the fear and the, the trepidation I think they're probably more afraid of getting caught than anything else so as they're going through the airport, there are few, a couple of hiccups that would jolt them, but uh, this is this is the experience. This is when people say they're acting suspiciously in the airport. This may be the kind of behavior that people would exhibit. And if you're having problems on the Facebook stream, please go Relax, to YouTube right, because Facebook seems to be Just keep it together. dropping it's and coming back over. at the same time ever so often so Proximo. once it happens again just go straight to the youtube Buenas EYE bienvenidos on dependency that's EYE Let's may I get your passport please Gary. you are traveling to Puerto Spain yeah yeah we are did you enjoy your visit to the island yeah do you have any baggage to check in uh yeah three pieces Will you like a window or I'll sit? ¿Qué es esto? ¿Qué es esto? Hello. Uh, sorry. Oh, okay, I need to ask you a few security questions. Did you pack your bags yourself? Um, yeah. Yeah. Have you left your bag unattended at any point? Uh, no, no. Good. Here are your passport and boarding pass. 
Thank you. Have a good flight, guys. Próximo. Por su motivo, por favor. Su boleto y pasaporte. Once. Señora. Adelante. Señora, por favor. Por favor, quítense sus prendas. Este. Ok, otra vez. Pasa por aquí. Ah, ok, qué bien. Su pasaporte y su boleto. Thank you. Adelante. La próxima, ven acá. So they just touched down at Piaku. Let's go. And the driver now comes to pick them up to take them to the extraction house. So they're on the way to the extraction house now. Hey, where's Spider? So Spider went and do some and get himself caught up, yes, yeah? so I bring him a little family there, you know. He legit, everything will work all right, Petel. All right? Don't worry yourself. Just a f my thing, eh, boy? Boy, Dan, boy, something made his feet to kill shit. Don't know, boy. And he out on. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Leroy. My friends and them call me Junks. But all you can call me Leroy. Alright? We all big people here, all you know, all you come here to do so. Relax all yourself now, man. Let me just do this thing while we're done and you know everything is everything. My boy wants here. Wants to carry all you and show all you to the room and we get business done. Alright? So I'm moving them now? Yeah, do we have to do that? Alright, let go. Come now, man. Quick, 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 quick. Do a stick. Go, go. Hurry up, let me go now.
Is that cool scene you know while you could sit on? Sit on now, will you? Alright. All the local is scared to me and there's no need to be. The process is a simple one, so here what it is we're going to do. I'm going to give you all something to pass it out. When you're all finished, we give all the money, we drop all the city gates and everything good. So, who wants to go first? Come pretty boy fly, come go first now man. Show the ladies and them what to do, be a gentleman. Come now man! We are taking him! I'm playing now. We see you dread like a man or dread. Get up! Get up! Let me go! I ain't gonna set a plate thing with all, you know? You want me to stay here and watch the other two? Nah, you want you come and see this. See what? Just come and see this. Where are going with George? I don't know, but... He'll be fine. He'll be back. Don't worry. Oh God, George. Look, we just have to keep it together. All right? I'm being angry through this. Nadia, it wasn't supposed to happen like this. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I'm so sorry. Nobody blaming you. Nobody. I'm so ashamed of myself. It's my fault. It's my fault, Nadia. Don't blame yourself. I'm so sorry. It's not your fault. <coughs> Is that when he comes back, we're gonna get to go home. Okay. Okay? Okay. Can you do that for me? Alright. I'm so sorry. Don't be, please. Okay? Just stay with me. I'm so sorry. George. George! George! What did you do to you, George? G George! What did you do to him? What did you do to him? Okay, no, we have to go. Please. Okay, no. Please. We have to go. We have to go. You don't have to do this. We have to go. Please. Please. Just, Just let me go. Get it over please. with before you come back. I don't want to go. Dread, what is going on here? Yeah, I ain't tell you bring the girl up. No. Well, I was trying to bring she. Dread, you playing with them, huh? No, 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 Dread, you're not Come, come, you're not taking that at all. You're not taking that at all. Dread, you know what is going on here, no. girl? No. I'm afraid to send it to me, the maker, I know. Come, let me go. Nadia. 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 Nadia, no. Nadia, I'm here. Nadia, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Nadia, look at me. 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 I'm here. Nadia. Leroy! Nadia. Leroy! Nadia. Nadia. Hey, where's all this noise inside? Nadia. Hey, wait, what's going on here? Hey. Wake up. Wake up, please. Hey, hey. Wake up. Move Nadia. Boy. Wake up, please. Move boy, what the f in here, ma? Dead. Oh, you getting on like a bitch show? You never see a dead body before. Show me. Let me take charge of the situation. Hey, go and get the next girl. Hey, I said go and get the next girl. Come on, move like you have some life.
Who are you gonna do with the girl? You ever got shaken before? We had to get the drugs. Hold a foot there, we got you outside. Hey, I say hold a foot there, we got you outside. For the go, let we go. Foot, come on, come on up. Get everybody. We. So, the one who has who was be warning them all the time, folks, that's the one who has died. For those of you listening, it normally happens like that. So, it's unfortunate, but that's what some of your children go through when they're out there with the peer pressure. So, here what finally happened with George and Nadia and um, Penny. They are now, George and, and Penny are left now in the house and George is looking for an Penny. escape route. Penny. He's found one and now Penny. he's Penny. going back to Penny who is extremely Penny. out of it. She's wake not fully please. conscious. Wake up please. And he's trying we to, have to go. wake her up. We have to go now, okay? So that they can they escape. Kill her, this extraction house they're because they are not aware of what go. is going to happen Penny. to them now. Penny, please. Now that their friend is dead, please wake up. They're not sure what is going to happen to them. I'm sorry. I'm so but sorry. George is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Unable. Unable to revive Penny, so he makes his escape. House. Yes, so folks, that's it. That's what happened to our nationals who dared to fall for a trafficker's sweet talk. And George is now escaping the extraction house. What happened to George? Well, you will have to stay tuned for that in what we have planned for you in another series. So that's it folks, that's the hard lesson that you learn. It's peer pressure, the red flags. You know, although she said she don't need drugs, I have a good time, but she fell for the peer pressure. So, um, short man, let's go to, 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 to promo 10, and then we'll return, we'll return with Miss Kimoy Thomas-Williams, Deputy Director of the Corner Trafficking Unit. So you go to 9 and 10, and return to us. Folks, you're listening to Andy Penn and C. Stay right there because we have lots more for you, um, including the mother of the week and a video on a carjacking that we want to warn you women, especially we like to show you how to be vigilant and not what, what not to do when you're going home. And before you do that, um, we would like to again say condolences to the families of three persons who are no longer with us, um, three persons who worked on this film, Marcia Henville. There's one, Brad Bengushi and Aaron. Aaron Charles, Aaron Charles, the one who escaped. That's George. George passed away from COVID last year. So, unfortunately, we lost him too. Yep. And I apologize for that noise that you're hearing in the background. And um, so let's go to that quick break, 9 and 10, and we'll be back with Deputy Director of the Corner Trafficking Unit, Ms. Kimoy Thomas-Williams. We'll be back. If you can make a difference in the life of a child by simply taking one step. 
this November. Let's shine once more at Guardian Group's Shine Charity 5K and 10K Walk and Run. And together, we can help secure hope for children most in need. Join us on Saturday, 26 November, Nelson Mandela Park, race time 4.25 p.m. Register now at www.runtoshine.com. And together, let's shine. Guardian Group, live easy. Notice something out. There may be blood about you, Rudy. Where's that? Girl, the man is passing up and down in front of here with a set of woman. I really know there's some woman living there, you know. And they can't even say as much as good morning. Well, listen now. I wonder if it's human trafficking. You think it's that? So, how can you spot and identify perpetrators and victims of trafficking? Many victims are found living and working together in the same place and sleep in shared and inappropriate spaces. Victims work excessively long hours. They often sleep in the daytime and work long nights. They are often escorted everywhere they go and may appear to be malnourished. They may show signs of physical abuse, drug and alcohol use, and may also appear withdrawn, fearful or intimidated. Victims who are migrants are often not in possession of their identity or immigration documents and have irregular immigration status. Perpetrators can be male or female and may appear to be managing or controlling the victims. And they may even at times appear to be the victim's best friend, boyfriend, or employer. We are the counter-trafficking unit of the Ministry of National Security, Trinidad and Tobago, safeguarding human life. Ms. Kimoy Thomas Williams is the current Deputy Director of the Corner Trafficking Unit in Trinidad and Tobago. She's also an attorney at law with 16 years' experience. Mrs. Thomas Williams' areas of expertise include human trafficking law, contract law, and general policy formulation. She also holds an International Master's of Business Administration in Innovation in Entrepreneurship Specialization and a Postgraduate Diploma in International Relations. As Deputy Director of the Corner Trafficking Unit, Mrs. Thomas Williams coordinates with all relevant stakeholders so as to ensure that all survivors of human trafficking receive the care and protection that they need. She also conducts human trafficking sensitization sessions with state agencies, the private sector and schools in human trafficking. In addition to her portfolio as Deputy Director of the CTU, Mrs. Thomas Williams sits as Director on both the North Central Region North Central Regional Health Authority and the Criminal Injuries Compensation Boards. She is also a member of a number of specially appointed committees, of which all of which are tasks tasked with improving the lives of the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago and the services offered to them. In her spare time, she volunteers as a motivational speaker for secondary school students. She also enjoys reading, physical exercise, and spending time with her family and friends. Good morning, Mrs. Thomas Williams. Hi, Hi good, good morning, Dr. Natasha, and good, good morning, morning to the listeners, listeners as well. Thanks, Thanks for, for having me this, this morning. morning. You're welcome, and thank you for taking the time out to speak with us and, of course, introducing you to this audience. It's the first time we're having you on, and um, we thank you very much for giving us that opportunity. So let's get right into it, Mrs. Thomas. Explain the elements of the act, the means, and the purpose of human trafficking. We all saw it, and uh, you know, just for the benefit of those who are listening and viewing and don't understand what is the act, the means, the purpose of human trafficking. Can you help us, please? Right. right. Okay. okay. So, so um, firstly, what I want to say is that, is that um, human trafficking has a number of definitions. definitions. If, if you, you were, were to just do a quick Google search, if, if you were to look at the Trafficking in Persons Act, which, which is our law, law or any other, other law across the world. world. But, but the, the common thread, thread in all of the definitions, definitions is the three elements. elements. So, so that, that is, is the act, the means, means and the purpose. purpose. In, in order, order for someone, someone to be charged with a human trafficking, trafficking offence, the three, offense, the three, three elements sorry, have to be present. So, so for example, some activities that fall under the act category would be recruiting of a victim, Transporting a victim from one place to the next, harboring a victim or receiving a victim. We would have seen those in the show that we just looked at, traffic, which are going to afterwards. The means, 
That speaks to how the trafficker gets a victim to be exploited, how the trafficker exploits the victim, and that could be done through fraud, deception, or use of force, like what you see on those movies where a white panel fan will pull up and grab a female into the van. That is like the most common one all of us would think. But right. usually, today, the traffickers are getting smarter, so they are tending to use a more soft approach where they are building a friendship or some sort of a relationship with the potential victim. So that is where the fraud and deception comes into play. Another, Another means activity, activity would be if a trafficker pays somebody for a victim. Sometimes they pay a victim's parent for that person, depending on this um, financial situation of that family. And of course, the exploitation, there are different types of exploitation. So there's sexual exploitation, which is the most common form. That is where women or men are being forced to provide prostitution services against their will. Other types of exploitation would include domestic servitude, forced labor, or in the, like in the movie we just looked at, the transportation of illegal goods such as weapons and drugs. Now, these were highlighted in the movie. Would you like to elaborate for the listener and viewer? Sure. Well, at the start of the show, we would have seen this group of friends go into a hotel and they encounter the tour guide. Now, you would see the tour guide played a pivotal role in getting them to the point of exploitation because he was working with the boss, Alejandro. Now, the tactic he used was recruiting. He was, he was the first recruiter because he took them to the private beach and the way in which he recruited them was through deception because remember, he was this nice tour guide who told them he would take them to paradise. So, you know, of course, they want to explore the island, so they were all excited and they trusted him all the more so since the hotel reception is sort of said he was somebody safe. Now, the movie didn't explore this part, but we can assume that she was part of the circle as well, because yeah. one thing with human trafficking is we have multiple players. It's not just the head trafficker. There are lots of other persons yeah. along the chain that get somebody to the point of becoming a victim. So that is the first set of recruitment we saw. And then when they were on the beach, we saw Alejandro come. And he started being friendly and telling them, you know, it's a nice island and he could show them around. And then later on, he even took the form of a savior where you saw two men attacking the females and then he came and he rescued them. So, of course, they are thinking, well, this guy is safe. He's looking after our safety. The deception went further when he took them into his house and then he whined and he dined them for two weeks, I believe it was, where he was treating them more or less like VIP guests. So, of yes. course, they wouldn't think somebody like that would bring danger to them and then you see he throws out okay well now you'll have to do something for me you'll have to transport cocaine back to trinidad so of course they are not they are not expecting this especially the girl i can't remember her name now but she was more or less in love with him Benny, because it's, yes. Had, yes they had a romantic relationship going on which is another common tactic traffickers use because a lot of times when we encounter victims, they don't refer to them as traffickers. They say, that's my boyfriend or that's my husband. But it's only when you hear their story, you realize they were really exploited. So the first means we saw, of course, was the fraud and the deception. But when they refused to carry the cocaine, you see, he got very forceful. So he started using other tactics like fear, threats, violence. So all of those things came into play. And then when the movie goes on, you see, well, obviously they would have swallowed the pills and they reach back to Trinidad. Another trafficker would have been the woman. That's the one who met them at the airport. Her role now would have been as a transporter to transport them from the airport to the house where they were supposed to release the pills. And of course the men, so you see how the ring gets bigger. The, the men now who received and harbored them their tactic was to use fear and threats because we remember one of the guys he seemed to be new and he was a bit timid but the other guy i think it was his cousin he was more forceful and he was like listen it wouldn't take anything for me to kill you all you know so you all have to do this so that was the fear and that was the violence that he used in order to exploit them which was the transportation of the um illegal drugs this, this is very is very important because it's, it's eye opening, especially to young persons out there. You know they like to take these group um, trips and go and and have fun and meet strangers and have fun. But the world is so bad right now that you can't trust persons that you don't know. Even right here in Trinidad and Tobago, you have to be so very careful with who you're communicating with online, who you're going out with. So many times we see women. Um, 
their bodies being found and then when the story comes out it's because they were going to meet a man on a date so yes. you have to be careful yeah Thank you very much. And um, if you just know, hold on. If you're just joining us, folks, you're listening to Independence, and we are speaking now with the Deputy Director of the Counter Trafficking Unit of Trinidad and Tobago, Ministry of National Security, Mrs. Kimoy Thomas Williams. Yeah, I was just gonna add in at the the part of the end. It was the the film ended a little um, open ended, so to speak, right. in that Penny was the one who was left, and in fact, she is probably at high risk now of being trafficked herself in the sex mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, she is at risk for it. And also she was at risk of losing her life because even though in the show, Alejandro would have said, I would give you 50,000 euros if you do this for me. He basically just wanted them to transport the goods. But remember, after that, and he knows his identity. So there was no way that they would mm. have really stopped because even if she got the $50,000 after losing her friend, um, Nadia, I believe her name was, after losing her, obviously she would have wanted to go to the authorities to make some sort of a report. So it's one of two things could have happened to her, um, Natasha, you're correct. It's either they would have killed her, or three things actually, they would have killed her, they could have killed her, she could have died, because we don't know if drugs would have escaped into her system, or they could have then used her either to continue the transportation of drugs or as a sexual service provider. Yep. And, and what, in fact, are the most common forms of human trafficking in Trinidad and Tobago? And who are the, the main victims and perpetrators? Right. So at present, the most common form would be the sexual exploitation. That is where um, the women, many women, they are being forced to provide sexual services against their will. Um, the main victims would be Venezuelan nationals who are here illegally and they range from the ages of 15 right up to about 32. Um, what happens is that many of them, they come here to work because we all know Venezuela has an economic problem right now. So they have families and they are coming here. The sad thing is that many of them seem to think that prostitution and earning from prostitution is legal in Trinidad. So they come here to provide prostitution services. However, they find themselves in situations where their freedom is removed from them. They have to give up their identity cards. They can't communicate with their relatives. They are forced to do the most heinous acts with men who live here in Trinidad, who have families, who have daughters, hmm. and they refuse. They are either beaten, threatened, and sometimes they are forced to take drugs to kind of put them in a, a daze where they have no control over themselves. But apart from the sexual exploitation, we've also seen an increase in labor, forced labor. And again, Venezuelan men are falling victim to it because they are going to work in the agricultural sector, the farms especially, and they are not being paid. Or if they are paid, they are paid, being paid very little. They are being forced to work for very long hours. And if they complain, they are being threatened with deportation or you know, they would turn them into the police. And of course, we also have domestic servitude which is happening in all of our neighborhoods. We just have to look around. Sometimes you see women who are in the yard, but they're not talking to anybody. You might tell them good morning, but they're not making eye contact with you. They're not going out, so you, they're always in the house. If they're going out, it's because they're going out with their, their boss. You know, so that is real as well in Trinidad and Tobago. Indeed, and in terms of the, the perpetrators, what are some of the steps that, that the CTO is taking to, to arrest them, literally? <laughs> right, okay, well, the first thing that has to happen is we need to get um, victims who are willing to come forward and share their story. So what we've started to do at the unit is to focus on their care and rehabilitation, because initially when we get victims, remember, they would have undergone a number of traumatic experiences. Sometimes some of them actually think the traffickers are their boyfriends because they would have fooled them by giving them expensive gifts and things like that. So what we do is we expose them to a lot of counseling so as to rebuild them. And we've also exposed them to a lot of courses. So they become very, they, they feel more self-sufficient and empowered and brave to come forward and share their stories. We've also started doing a lot of collaboration because, as you can tell, human trafficking is not a one-man show. It involves a number of elements. It involves the financial aspect of it because at the end of the day, most, if not all, criminals do crime, be it um, murder, kidnapping, stealing, human trafficking for money because, you know, it's all about the money. And human trafficking is actually a very lucrative business. 
So we've started collaborating with a number of agencies to be able to get as much information on these persons from different sectors. So that would help to strengthen the case that we have against the perpetrators. Another thing that we are doing, and Natasha, just one more point. Another thing we are doing is mass sensitizations because we leave it or not, children in school have a lot of information. We've done a few sessions well where after children come forward to us with information. So we are getting the word out there, not just to students and the private sector, but also to the migrant community. We've partnered with one or two NGOs who deal with the migrant community, that is the Venezuelans, and we are trying to sensitize them as well. So they in turn could also share the message to their relatives in Venezuela and letting them know that when they come to Trinidad, one, it's an offense to enter into the country illegally, and two, you're not guaranteed to get a job that is being sold to you, where you know they're saying you can make X amount of dollars and it's all paradise. We are trying to make the situation real for them. If you're just joining us, you're listening to Independency, and thank you for those of you who just joined. Um, we are now speaking with Mrs. Uh, Kimoy Thomas-Williams, who is Deputy Director of the Counter Trafficking Unit, uh, Ministry of National Security. Now, Ms. Before, you, before you go on, I just wanted to stick in a, another question based on what you said earlier about the many different persons who are involved in uh, different levels. And you just mentioned the fact as well that, that children are good sources of, and young people are good sources of information. But within that that network of people who are involved, either directly or indirectly, do they often, have you found, do they know of each other and what other people, other players in, in the game are doing? Because in the, in the case of traffic, the hotel receptionist may not know, she may know who Alejandro is, but she probably doesn't know what he does. Mm -hmm. The tour guide definitely knows Alejandro yeah. and they're close, but he would not give as much information about what Alejandro does to the hotel receptionist. So how, how does that information flow within the network and how does that, um, how can it assist law enforcement in terms of catching up with the, the major players? Right. So you're correct. The information, all of the information wouldn't go to all of the players, just like within any other criminal organization. The ones at the head will have all the information and then only what information they want will trickle along. So what we have been trying to do is reach out to all possible players or persons who could be exposed to players. So, for example, like the hotel industry, the restaurants, all of these people, because they see things happening. And sometimes they might find to themselves that this is weird, this is fishy. But they wouldn't know it's human trafficking. Or they would, even if they know it's human trafficking, they wouldn't know who to report it to. Right. So we are hoping and we are seeing results of it by us reaching out to prisons and sensitizing them and telling them who to reach out to, who's the point of contact. You know, they feel comfortable to come forward with reports. It might not be a case of human trafficking, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Now, Ms. Ms. Thomas Williams, um, who are the most vulnerable persons in to human trafficking in Trinidad and Tobago? You know, and, right. and what are some of the signs? Right. So the most vulnerable, of course, would be the illegal migrants for a number of reasons. Remember, they are here. They can't speak the language. Many of them can't speak English. So for, for that, that already puts them at a disadvantage. They are here illegally as well. So they have to be in hidden places and it's very easy to pry on them, all the more so since they are desperate and they need money for their relatives. So they are willing to work in any situation. So you'd find that more with labor exploitation where they would be working for very long hours. Sometimes they don't get bathroom breaks. They might be fed once a day, but they don't know who to complain to. And even if they do, they are fearful because their traffickers would have said, listen, if you go and complain, they're not going to listen to you. They're going to take you and send you back to your country or they're going to just put you in a prison and leave you there. So they are very, very vulnerable. <coughs> Our young persons, unfortunately, are vulnerable as well. Because when I go to these schools and I ask, how many of you speak to persons online that you've never seen? about 50 to 70 percent of the students raise their hands hmm. and they say well you know it's just online and it's okay i said okay but how much information do you share about yourself and they share a lot of information so for example they might say well i have tennis at this place on tuesdays or i go swimming at this place or i like to lie at c3 or movie town and just simple information pieces of information like that expose them to predators 
and traffickers. So that is something that we try to drive home as well when we are sensitizing them. Even to the women, when I sensitize women, I always tell them, you know, many of them tend to use dating apps such as Tinder. And that is also very dangerous because I've had friends, male friends, who have seen their pictures being used on Tinder and it's not them. So they have men oh. stealing pictures, yeah, wow. from men and passing off themselves as certain person. And it's not them. So when this woman thinks she's talking to, let's say, James repeatedly and they build this connection, she feels safe enough to go and meet this James at X place. And then when she gets there, it's not really James. So all of these things makes, make us vulnerable in society. So it doesn't matter what nationality you are, what economic background you're from. Once you show certain vulnerabilities, the predator can't pry on that. Now, Ms. Williams, uh, we have a question from, from YouTube, which is a kind of related thing. It's something that, that often pops up when you hear girls or young women go missing. Is there a connection between those incidents and human trafficking at all? Right. So to date, we've had, at the CTU, no records of local the local girls going missing turning up as victims of trafficking um there's a percentage of these females who are found you always see well this person was found or whatever so that's one thing and that is something i think too we as a nation have to deal with because apart from the fact that it wastes police resources it also encourages other females to feel young females that is it's okay to leave their parents home so i think once these girls are found they should be enrolled in some sort of program where you know whatever it is they're dealing with they get assistance in yeah, dealing with it Mm -hmm. No, yeah, but the females who are never found, sometimes it's a case of a domestic violence situation where their partner may have kidnapped them and then unfortunately killed them. Um, this is not to say that some of the girls who go missing are not victims of trafficking, where they may perhaps be lured to travel with somebody and we just don't have record of it. So that is why we have to be very careful. I know recently there was a suspected case of a local girl being trafficked, but fortunately it turned out to not be the case, where she was taken to the airport with a one-way ticket to travel to another country. And we found it strange because she's of school age, you know, and yet there's a one-way ticket to go to that country and not to come back. But when we were able to investigate the matter and we spoke to her parents, it turned out that her father was living in that country and she was going to school there. Right. But you see how easy that situation is because many young girls speak to men online. This is where the online grooming comes into play. And you know, all teenagers have problems at home. So they might say, well, you know, my parents stressing me out and I just fed up or whatever. And then he'd be like, well, you come with me, I'll take you from them, don't worry. And they feel they're in love and they <laughs> go and they meet the man. And he might say, well, walk with your passport. And you know, mm -hmm. she will be like, oh yes, I'm going to live the best life now. I don't have to go to school, he'll take care of me. And then bam. He goes she goes with him to the to the airport he has her ticket and they travel so that is why it's so important to for all agencies to be on the same page so like the airport authority immigration all of these officers when they see things like this this is supposed to be a red flag and they're supposed to contact the relevant authorities to investigate it no miss thomas williams um the somebody just asked a question here too are men trafficked as well I mean, just as, uh, yes, yeah, some no, I'm just responding to a question here. Oh. Uh, are vul men vulnerable as well? Are men subject to trafficking as well? Yes, 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 of course. Men are susceptible to being trafficked both for sexual exploitation, labor exploitation, domestic servitude. There's no gender differentiation. They are, they are vulnerable as well. So so tell us, um, uh, for those of you just joining us, again, we speaking to Miss. Kimoy Thomas Williams of the Corner Trafficking Unit, Ministry of National Security. She's Deputy Director, and she's taking us through the steps of the unit, the and, and initiatives, and of, of course explaining to the the signs and and what we should look out for. And should I ask, um, what advice would you give to persons to protect themselves from against human trafficking? Well, again, um, since COVID had started, a lot of the traffickers moved online to recruit persons either through Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and now, of course, the dating site. So what I would advise, especially women, is to be very careful with who you are speaking with online 
it's not safe for you to go and meet somebody that you only know online and you all don't have any mutual friends or anything like that. You're opening up yourself to a lot of problems. Children, parents who are listening on, who have children on school, you need to be aware of who your children are communicating with online, not just on the chats, but even the games, because a number of students, male students, play games like Fortnite, Roblox, and something else they had said, I can't remember, Two of Duty or something like that, but they said mm -hmm. they speak to a lot of persons they don't know. So you have to always be mindful of this and educate your children on it. For persons who are coming into the country illegally, firstly, it is wrong, it is against our law, so you could be charged with it. But also, offers of jobs where you're being offered, like, let's say, 500 US a day, some weird, weird exorbitant um, salaries they are being offered and they are being showed nice places. It's not true, it's all a gimmick. When you come here, chances are you're going to find yourself being exploited. So I'm really asking the migrant community here in Trinidad and Tobago to reach out to their relatives in Venezuela and impress that on them because many times it's very heartbreaking when we have to speak to parents in Venezuela and they say, well, their children just disappeared on them. They don't know where they are. And their children really just came to Trinidad on their own to work and they end up being prostitutes. They end up being beaten. They end up being exposed to a lot of things that children, not even adults, should be exposed to. So that is something else that you have to be very careful about to protect yourself from trafficking. Also, these ads on the newspapers, there are still ads on papers that mm -hmm. people answer. If you want to go, make sure and do proper research on the company. And when you're going for the interview, try to go with more than one person to keep your company. Because too many times we see women answering ads on the papers and then when they go, they just disappear or their bodies are found. So we need to be mm. very mindful of that as well. Correct. Yes, Correct. yes. That is that is actually one of the um, the stories that we have highlighted on our independency of a local girl who answered an ad and ended up being trafficked within Trinidad and Tobago yes. for sex. Um, mm -hmm. So that is a real, a real threat, a real risk um, that is out there and present in Trinidad and Tobago. And, and yeah, there's and one more, God, sure. there's one more threat. Let me put it sure. in before I forget. Yes. Um, what we've seen happening in other countries is coaches, sports coaches, recruiting mm. persons as well. And I know in Trinidad and Tobago, there's a big thrust to watch towards football and cricket. A lot of young boys, they want to be footballers and cricketers. And yeah. unfortunately, sometimes their parents don't have money to travel with them abroad. And what we've seen, not in Trinidad, thankfully, but you know, Trinidad copies a lot. So it's not surprising if it could happen in Trinidad very soon or if it's happening already, where coaches would say, I would take your son away to try out for a team. And then the parent is trusting of the coach. And then when that child goes over there two things could happen either one the child is exploited one time without even given the opportunity to try out for the team so he's forced to transport drugs he might be sexually assaulted or the other way would be where he tries out for the team he gets on the team and whereas like his teammates are being paid let's say two thousand us a week he might get 500 tt a week and the coach is pocketing the rest so that is something that is happening now so parents need to be very careful i'm not saying don't send your children, you know, and, and let them miss out on that opportunity. But try to do as much research as you can about the team, you know, build a rapport with the person over there so that you know for sure that your child is going into a safe place and that your child will be safe over there. So that is something we have to be careful about as well. Right, right. Um, Ms. Williams, um, you know, we, we, we the Ministry of National Security, CTU, they have been running a lot of ads right through some since the CPL to now. You see the ad in the newspaper. We play it here on our independency. On and TV. On, on TV. TV. Yes, it's it's constantly. So, mm -hmm. Trinidad and Tobago, I mean, we, we, we must say that you all are doing your part to to prevent this scourge um, and, 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 you know, put a dent in this modern day slavery. Now, if someone, how, how can someone report trafficking? Where, where, where can, you know, how can a report like that be made discreetly? Right. So I know persons tend to be very fearful and not trusting of the hotlines in general. But we, you, we take most reports from the public through the hotline, which is anonymous. And the number there is 800-4-CTU, which is 800-4288. There are persons who feel more comfortable to send an email 
so they can also send an email to counter trafficking unit at mns.gov.tt. Those are the two main ways in which reports can be made. Now, of course, if something is happening live and they can't access CTO, they, can't, they don't have time to call the hotline, all they have to do is go to the nearest police station, make the report, and then the police um, would contact CTU. Wonderful. Mr. Yeah. Yes, uh, and of course, you mentioned the, our, the, our, um, our neighbors, the Venezuelan uh, migrants, and, right. their, and their families back in Venezuela. And I don't want to give away too much, but I mean, I know you we remember we observed in 16 days, and next week, please God, we're going to have a, a story of that, a similar a story of that nature. Um, right. You know, and um, again, we will request that you join us just for a brief bit and to yeah. tell us what the CTU will be doing. But I know from now until the, the, the days of activism are where you're going to be very busy. And, um, yeah. And, and we thank you for, for for at least what you're doing and the unit of the corner trafficking unit doing again to keep us educated and to keep us safe. Um, hard working officers and we thank you and the Ministry of National Security for doing your part and um, we let's hope when the next tips report is released that we have we come in for favorable mention. Yes, for sure, for sure. And one more thing, if any of the listeners out there would like sensitization to be done to perhaps their children's schools, they could contact us as well on our MNS email address, the counter trafficking unit at mns.gov.tt and request it and we arrange it to suit. Well, we, we already have a request. Matura and it was it was really surprising to see how informed the students were down there and they were asking questions. So, yeah, we, we do the outreach to the schools. Well, Mr. Ma, I must tell you, we already somebody, um, pre, uh, you know, anticipated what you were going to say because there already is a request for the uh, a presentation. And so I'll give you a little more update of okay. air. But yes, yeah. Some, some, yeah, there are people who are requesting that the CTU and of course traffic as well come to their neck right, of the yes. woods yeah. so um so people um thank you very much for for your time um if you have any questions your email address there natasha it's yeah i just changed it oh, oh <laughs> i just okay. changed it don't worry right. yes got it um yes yeah, so folks if you have any any questions any quick questions for us here you, you get a chance to call in 622-3937 622-3937 and and you know any questions for mr thomas or on the film that you saw but mr thomas you know going back to that film it's a perfect example of what peer pressure is all about mm -hmm. and yes. and what peer pressure can do to a person and the person who been warning them all the time unfortunately that's correct. the person who correct yeah and that tends to happen, eh? That tends to happen. It's always the person who was a bit hesitant at first. They end up being the first one to, to die or for some demise to happen to yeah. that person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, so 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 once again, you know, it's 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 a pleasure that um that that we have you here with us this morning, and we thank you so much for taking the time to spend with us. And as we start this leg of the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence. We extend our congratulations to all the units, all the units under the arm of the, all the arms of the protective service on the Ministry of National Security for the job that they're doing. Um, so we have a post six two two three nine three seven. Hello, good morning. Hold on. Yeah. Hold. Uh, short man, I changed that email address, huh? so Jenny's Hello, good morning. Not hearing Hello. Gary. Hello. Hello. It seems to have been some, some yeah, it seems to have been a little technical uh, Facebook, even the episode of Facebook, it was the um so but well, Mr. Moss, we won't keep you. I know it's Sunday and um we have a few more Sundays to go with you, so we thank you very much for breaking the ice and cutting the ribbon here on this sixteen days of activism against gender based violence. And we any closing remarks from you? Thanks, Garth and Natasha again for having me. Um 
No, I look forward to being back on the program as well as to have other representatives on to speak about what the role they play in the fight against human trafficking. Yes. And again, I just want to urge parents, please, to protect your young ones just because you have sons and daughters who are 14, 15, and 16, and they may seem adult and act adult. Trust me, they need to mature a lot more and they need our guidance. So that is definitely what I want to tell the parents out there and to be very aware of who they are communicating with online. Mrs. Kimoy Thomas Williams, thank you very much. And we'll keep in touch. Yes, thanks so much. Have thank a good you. Sunday. And thanks again to the listeners for listening on. You're welcome. We okay, have a call, bye. Gary. Hello, good morning. Yes, good morning, Garza and Natasha. Good morning. Wonderful program today. I I have known Ms. Uh, Thomas Williams since infancy, so I know that huh. with her guidance that you will do well. My concern is um, the ports, the former ports of entry. They 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 are they appear to be officials who may be involved in illicit illegal activities. I don't hear much about what. A what action the Ministry of National Security or indeed the counter trafficking unit is playing towards curbing not just the unofficial ports of entry, but certainly the official ports of entry. And I talk about the immigration, whether it's customs, um, even when it is, it's from the military. So I would like to hear more about that, particularly when Mrs. Thomas Williams comes back next week. Do have right. a pleasant weekend. Thank well, you. Thank you very much for calling. Ms. Mrs. Williams? Yes, I'm um, still here. As you said, when you, we, 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 of course, give you time to, to, to gather that information on our next program so that we could talk about okay. that. Okay. Yeah? Sure. All right. So I could sign off now? Yes, ma'am. So thanks again, right? Okay. Take care. Thanks so much. All right. You take care. You're welcome. Bye-bye. All right, folks. So that's... Um, Morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Why is it that when we talk about human trafficking, we only talk about Veni, the Venezuelans? You have human trafficking coming from Guyana. You have human trafficking coming from CARICOM too. So they have a right to turn that into Tobago. How come you never talk about these people? It's always Veni. Well, you are correct, sir. There are persons from other um, Caribbean nations. You mean taking advantage of too, right? To yeah. That. Yes. They're right. becoming too serious too. Huh? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, yeah. you're right. You know, and not just Venezuela either. either. From the Dominican Republic, uh, Colombia, Cubans. Cubans. Yeah. There are a lot of um, nationalities of persons. Jamaica too. Trafficked. Jamaica too. Okay. Yes. So yes. we can touch on only Venezuela. Okay. All right. Well, so we right, can sir, touch on that next week, please, God. Right. Thanks for reminding us. Thanks for bringing it up. All right. Um, so, folks, before we go, we, you know, we wanted to, to highlight something for you all that happened this week, but we're going to take our time and do it next week. But at the mother of the week, we want to <laughs> we wanna highlight the mother of the week. And the mother of the week goes to... Can I get that applause button quick? The mother of the week goes to that lady whose children... So, I can pull up that video quick. We, have, we just have about two minutes before you wrap up. That's um, video E. Now, you saw a, a video of children jumping through. A but she and two young ladies jumped through the back door window to back window of a maxi taxi. They're going to they're gonna mess with the wrong maxi taxi driver one day. You know? And But you know what the mother did? The mother didn't say, not my child, and she didn't stay quiet. You know what she did? She took her child to the police station. Let's say a bit of this quick. Um, this is, we still have good parents outside there who are trying with their children and trying to keep them on the right path. So it's not every child that we see to do something wrong, we blame the parents because some of the parents have it real hard. And again, I say kudos to this lady. Right? She went to, she carried the child to the station. She, she, she came down to the office with her too. Right? To let us know that she's dealing with it, with her child with this, with, the, with that situation and she's not condoning it. Kudos to you, Miss Lady. Mm -hmm.
Well done, well done, mother. Well done. You wait on the seven from the um, Varinja who, who almost killed that Maxi taxi driver. None of you came forward yet and claimed your child. But congratulations to this mother. Thank you all, folks, for a wonderful session this morning. Ms. Kimoy Thomas Williams, thank you for your time. And we have major news next up at 12 with Sterling Henderson. Good afternoon. Good afternoon.